Hello! Oh, camera's moved again. Hey Amber! You can take that down, that's from Twitch this morning. Oh. There go. How are you doing guys? Just going to have a look. Sorry, I was just looking at decoupage papers to see if I wanted to use any of them, but I don't think I do today. Or maybe I do. That one's quite nice, actually. I might want to use that one. I'm finally going to put my bunny. Been drawing and painting for two days, making hubs something for his birthday. Awesome. I've been busy. I've been vlogging. I'm not vlogging every day. I cannot vlog every day. I am trying to vlog something every day, but I can't put a video out every day. So I vlogged yesterday and I've done a bit today. But I don't have a time to edit a vlog today because I'm doing stuff for tomorrow's class. I've done Twitch. I've done YouTube. I don't have time to do a vlog as well. I don't know how these people do vlogs every day. Uh, unless that's all they do. Because it takes me an entire morning to edit my vlog. But uh, you should get a vlog tomorrow, which will be Tuesday and Wednesday. Or will it be Monday, Tuesday? No, you'll get a vlog tomorrow that will be Tuesday, Wednesday, because you've had one that was Monday already. Yesterday, I think. Hi, baby. Come say hello. Come say hello, Miss Maddie's feeling better today. Come and say hello, my love. Bobsy. Bobsy. Bobsy, girl. Come on. Come and say hello. Come up and say hello to me. Come on, my love. Hey, Luna, Ash, Sue, Cody. Hi, guys. Miss Maddie's here, but she doesn't want to come up. She had a poorly tum-tum yesterday, and then she did the most enormous boom, and now she feels a bit better. You feel better now? Much more lively today, aren't you? Yes. She's got a spring in her step again. I think she got a little bit bunged up. Yes. She's also very excited because today she gets Jimkin for breakfast and Jimkin for dinner. Yeah. Jimkin and rice, isn't it, baby? Yes. Does right. Does right. Boo boo boo. Here she is. Hi, baby girl. Oh, kisses from Mama. Thank you, baby. Oh, I love you too. I do, I love you too. Oh, scratchy bum. Scratchy bum. There you go. You done now? You want to sit on your bed? Do you want to sit on your bed there? Or are you going to play with your brother? You just came to say hello. She just came to say hello. Hi, Ina. Hi, Rish. Okay. I was just, as I started, as I went to start, I was thinking, I kind of want to do something with the cover of this, but I don't know what I want to do, so... Maybe I'll leave this. Uh, boom. Ostara. So. I've been working on my. Whoops. April art challenge stuff. Here we go. You see these in the vlogs. But I know some people don't like watching vlogs. So you don't have to. Uh. These are my April art challenges. That's X-ray. I don't like this one, but I'll, I'll fix it. I need. I just need to come up with something to do with it. This is Knotted. Day three is in another book. This is day four. That's the thing I found that I used as a reference for those skeletons. But I think I tried to follow this too closely and that's why they don't look right because I can't draw that anatomically correct. So I think I need to just not draw it correct. Um, day four, three on fire. Day four is in my other book. Day five, 
folded, day six, unibrow, day seven, bottled, day eight, jungle, from the jungle. This is my favourite one so far. I love this. Day nine was famous musician and as those of you who were Nirvana fans would know, um, last weekend marked the anniversary of Kurt's death. So I used my rock and roll book that if, if you follow me on um, Twitch, you'll have seen this before, or if you've done any of By Buns classes, you'll know about this book. And I actually used Kurt's page with his photo on um, to do this. I'm still working on it. I'm getting out a lot of slightly post-teenage angst in it. When was it? 91? Yeah, 91. I was 19, 20. I'd just turned 20. I was at uni. Huge Nirvana fan. Adored Kurt. I was very... I wasn't upset about it. I didn't get upset about it. I got angry. And I still don't know to this day why I was so angry about it. But I'm still angry now. So there's a lot of venting going on here. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. I don't I don't buy into the conspiracy theories. Myself, ninety four was it? I thought it was ninety one. Yeah, I knew it was the early nineties. I don't buy into the conspiracy theories. Honestly, I just looking at his his eyes. You know, I don't think there was. He always looked sad. He always just looked like there was something behind his eyes that he just couldn't... He wasn't meant for this world, personally. But I got angry. I was angry. And I'm still angry, and I don't know why I'm angry, so there's a lot of venting going on. Uh, but I've put in as many references as I could think of. She pushed him to it. I don't think she pushed him to it. I don't think she helped in any way. Um, and I think for maybe for his personality, he was already on the road. He was one of those people who was already on that path anyway, and she certainly did not help. But anyway. Uh, I printed out, I have not, I didn't print out, I used some pictures from a magazine. There's like old photographs and old, um, yeah, I think if he'd had somebody who actually helped him, he would have been better. He would have been fine. He would have still been with us today. But I think with the drugs and her being a crazy cow, and his personality and him being on that road anyway. Uh, without help, he was always going to end up that, that way. It was just a matter of time, I think. He felt too much, yeah. I don't think he ever wanted to be famous. I think that's the problem. All he wanted was pe to give people music. He wanted to make music. I don't think he ever wanted to be famous. If he had never been famous, he might have got lucky and just ended up as an alcoholic, perhaps, but. Uh, as evidenced by the main quote in the middle there, which is one of the things he's best known for saying, I'd rather be dead than cool. Um, and then I got fixated on that um, lithium line. I don't, I swear I don't have a gun. And it just kept coming up, so I it's everywhere. I swear, I swear I don't. I swear I don't have a gun. I don't have a gun, I swear. I don't. I don't have a gun. Just kept coming up. So there's a lot of venting going on here. Um, we've got the uh, Leonard Cohen Afterworld, because I'm a big Leonard Cohen fan as well. Um, my whole existence is for your, is for your entertainment. Friends in my head. Find my friends, they're in my head. Um, we've got memorabilia, which is the, the photos and the pictures and the postcards and stuff. Uh, 
then I found all of these bits are bits from his journals because I've got the journal. So I copied a couple of bits out and cut those out and put them on. Um, and this one had a thing. I can't remember the exact quote, but it's something along the lines of I've lost my mind many times and my wallet many more, I think it says. Um, so I emphasised mind and put never over the top. Uh, Bleach, obviously we've got the Queen of Hearts, representative of Courtney Love. Um, and then these cross things, he drew these a lot in his journals, those doodles in the page. Uh, and I, I draw them a lot and I use ones with circles. Um, but there is a thing here about impeaching God. My goal is to impeach God. So these crosses are all mishmashed. They're like, there's some that are equal, there's some that are regular crosses, some are upside down. I just drew them randomly, basically. Yeah, lots of teenage angst going on in this. I experienced my teenage angst early because I was, <laughs> I was too busy with schoolwork because I was a nerd. Anyway, for those of you who watched the vlog, Thank you for the recommendations. I appreciate it. Ta-da! I was actually going to get the wall one, which is the one with the rainbow colours on that several people recommended. Um, but this one is the one that my hairdresser recommended. It's the one that she uses, uh, and it was half the price. So I thought, you know what? It's on sale. It's half price. I'm going to get that one. It's exactly the same. It's got the same stuff, but it's Remington, which means it's got a, an extra warranty on it. So. so that should be fun later. Anyway. Did the piece help you release any of your anger? I'll let you know when I've finished it. I don't know. I don't know until I'm finished. I just realised yesterday, as I was working on it, that I was still angry about it. And I've never figured out why I was angry about it. Because it's not a normal reaction. Normal reaction is to be sad. It's not a normal reaction to be angry, unless it's a personal, somebody you know personally. And of course I didn't know him personally. So, I don't know, it's weird. This is going to be interesting, this decoupage paper. This is the decoupage paper that I got from Americana Deco Arts. Um, it's nice paper, but it feels strange. I'm used to using decoupage paper that feels like um, napkin, but this feels like it feels like that Tim Holtz tissue paper. Actually, it feels kind of shiny, which makes me wonder if it's going to stick. Always makes me wonder if it's going to stick. I thought this might be kind of cute as a little bit of the page I've got my bunny the bunny is a uh, free printable on my website if anybody wants one you just um it's in the uh ostara forums toxic relationship oh yeah well when you're both doing drugs <laughs> that's about as toxic as you can get isn't it and i don't think she's particularly stable I don't think he was particularly stable, and that's just a path for disaster, isn't it? You get two in un mentally unstable people on drugs in a relationship, uh, that's about as bad as it gets, isn't it? But, I don't know, there's a lot of blame attached to Courtney, and I, I find that quite sad, because I think she's got the same problems. I think he was, he had the depressive side and it makes her manic. I think she's just got, got just as many mental health issues as he had. And they were both on drugs and they wound each other up. It's a very small line between people who are prone to suicide and people who are prone to homicide. And I think she's possibly more prone to homicide and he's put, he was obviously more prone to suicide. 
Yeah, there still are a lot of people on drugs in Seattle. And the ones who aren't are on coffee. But hey. Anyway. Moving on. Yeah, I thought this might just be nice to use as a, a little bit on the bottom. By the way, I'm sorry if there's banging and weird noises in the background. There's renovations going on next door and they keep turning up at weird times and starting banging and stuff. Okay, I think. Let's see how this stuff tears. Oh, that tears quite nicely, actually. That'll make a nice little, little hill for our bunny. That's why you drink tea. Yeah, tea's not much better, honey. It's just as much caffeine in tea. In fact, there's more caffeine in tea. And people who drink tea tend to drink more of it. Mm-hmm. Um... What did I do with all my... Oh, they're all in here. My... Hang on, I'm trying to find... Have I got one that isn't clipped down? No. Oh, that one's not clipped down. There we go. I don't need the clips on there anyway. Got some more of that somewhere. Where's the rest of it? Oh, this will do. Scrap paper anyway. So this is in my Wheel of the Year section. I don't have a thing where I've got loads of correspondences and stuff. I've just got like pages where I write in stuff that's relevant. But I do like to do an arty page. And I haven't got round to it on these yet. I've done the Samhain one. I thought I might do the Ostara one before we make it to Beltane. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm more stable on caffeine, I gotta say. I'm a lot more stable on and if without my caffeine I, I used to get migraines. I haven't had a migraine in years. I haven't had a migraine since I got my date piercing three years ago. I've had headaches, but not migraines. I used to have debilitating migraines that used to floor me for several days and then I'd have like two or three days afterwards where I, I couldn't function because I had a migraine hangover. Okay, let's see. What are we going to do with this? I think I want to... I think I want to put that there. And I think I want to do kind of a... A bluey background with mm, bluey or I want to do kind of a spring, you know, like a sunset sunrise type thing. But I want to do a spring one rather than summer. Like summer would be really deep hues and pinks and blues. I want to do kind of a weak watery one like pale yellows and oranges and maybe a little bit of blue at the top, that kind of thing. Maybe fade it out as it comes across here. Yeah, I think that will work. I need some more gel medium. My gel medium is almost empty. Look, it's almost empty. I think I might have the slightest dribble left in my bottle. Let's see. Probably need to put this upside down actually. I use this Liquitex matte medium but I put it in a bot in a tub because it's easier to use. Oh. See? Lots easier to use a tub. I'm taking 
taking the lid off the tub would be helpful as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, there's barely a dribble. I need to put it upside down and then empty it out. on that medium. Well that's just sad isn't it? Let's get some more of that. Uh, where's my medium brush? I never figured out what my trigger was. Just comes and goes. random or possibly stress related I don't know I got my days piercing and I split up with my ex a couple of days later and one of my friends has joked many times that she's never sure if the uh the migraines went away with my day piercing on my ex. <laughs> She's kind of got a point. But I had my migraines since I was a kid, so... I'm pretty sure... Okay, so decoupage paper is basically just tissue paper, but it's more annoying than napkins. But it was free. <laughs> it's a sample thing from Deco Art. It's nice, I like the patterns, I love the patterns on them, but... You know, I've never used decoupage paper specifically, but then I never really kind of understood what the difference was between decoupage and collage. I mean, it's basically the same, isn't it? A little bit temperamental but it's going down it's no more annoying than trigger is air pressure oh yeah I always used to know when there was a storm coming or if the, the air pressure changed I get really bad earache even now I get I get headaches that are like somebody stabbing me in my ear and that was always what used to happen when I got a migraine so I'm actually at the point now where I don't know if I still get migraines and I just don't experience the pain. Which I think is possible because I still get, my eyes still do that jumpy thing, you know, where your vision goes and it kind of goes like you've had an electric shock almost. There we go, that'll do. So, yeah, it's a bit weird. I don't know. Maybe I still get migraines. It just doesn't hurt anymore. But either way, it doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> That's good with me. That makes me happy. Uh, I've got a yellow. It's a very bright yellow, but it's a yellow. And I've got a cream that is a yellow-based cream. Yeah, I've had uh, my sister gets aura migraines or they ocular migraines that's the one yeah where a vision goes but she gets crippling migraines that absolutely floor her in a matter of seconds but they're over in three hours she'll spend th I've I've seen my sister lying on the floor in so much pain that she couldn't cry because it would have made it worse um 
and my dad picking her up off the floor and just taking her to bed. And then she'd come down three hours later and she'd be completely fine again. Whereas mine were nowhere near that bad. I just always needed to be, you know, lie me down in a cold, dark room. But I'd had nausea for days. Which is great when you're a metaphobic. That's just what you need. Um, but yeah, the no nausea and not being able to see properly, couldn't stand direct light, couldn't stand noise, couldn't just everything overload, everything overload. Okay, this is a bit dry. I need to add a bit of water. This paper soaks up the paint, but I refuse to use gesso. I don't refuse to use gesso, I'm just lazy. I don't see the point. I don't need to use gesso. I can see, you can just add a bit of water and it works fine. Um, yeah, mine used to hang around for like two or three weeks, whereas my sister's were two or three hours, but she had it way worse, way worse. On a scale of one to 10, my pain was like 11 and a half and hers was about 35. Similar to a cluster headache, yeah. Now I still get cluster headaches. But that's linked to my ear canal, because as soon as I get a cluster headache, it starts it starts like somebody driving an ice pick in my ear. And from that point on, I've got maybe half an hour to take some meds before I'm in just agony from the pain in my ear and the, the pressure build up in my sinuses and everything else. But it's not the same as migraine. It's not like a migraine at all. It's a similar thing, but it's in nowhere near as debilitating, you know. I always liken um, cluster headaches to a hangover. Like, even with a really bad hangover, you can still just about function if you have to. With a migraine, you're not going anywhere. There could be two and a half million pounds sitting on the floor and it's going to be staying there until you're ready to get up. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way no way it's happening okay I kind of like that I think I want a kind of a pinky tinge in there now from the yellow I've got a soft pinky tinge I do have a soft pinky tinge Whoops, I have a, that's more of a beige, I think. There's a pink, there we go. I didn't realise I had a pink. I didn't see that one the other day when I was looking for a pink. I think it's because it was pushed up in the corner. Yeah, they're not fun, not fun at all. Okay, I want an orangey colour in the middle there. I don't really have an orange. Uh, do I have an orange over here? Yeah, I've got one, but it's not. I want a peachy colour. I don't have a peachy colour. Mm. I wonder. I mix this white, this orange,
with a bit of white. This is a translucent colour, which means you can see through it, and this is a translucent white, which means you can see through it. Oh, for heaven's sake. Ugh, it's not open. He had to hide the knives when he... <laughs> yeah. Although, honestly, I've, had, I've heard it described before as you have to hide the knives if people get on migraines, but honestly, I couldn't have picked up a knife and wielded it. I couldn't, certainly couldn't have been bothered to go as far as the kitchen to find one. <laughs> it just would not have happened. <laughs> well, there we go, there's a peachy colour, that'll do. Maybe a hint of yellow in it. Just a hint. There, warm it up a bit. That'll do. I very you rarely use pastel cone tones, so that's why I got a, a mixing white, a translucent mixing white, so I can mix it with other colours and keep the. Because usually when you mix white with other colours, you end up with like a, pa a a really thick opaque pastel, and I don't want pastel colours to be thick and opaque unless I you know if I want them to be thick and opaque that's fine but a lot of the time I don't because if I'm going to use pastel colours I'm usually layering them like this there we go that's better bit of pink bit of yellow bit of orange do and then I've got some nice pale blue where's that nice pale blue there he is put that in oh that's grey oh everything is slightly off uh, that's a nice bright blue I'll use that one a little bit too bright ooh going to the art museum Cool. That sounds fun. That's a little bit too bright, but again, I'll throw some white in it, it'll be fine. Bonus of homeschooling. Right, Amber? There we go, that's nice a nice spring blue kind of colour. Okay. It's not quite as softly blended as I would like, but 
that's because I used my acrylics instead of going, huh, I've got some mermaid markers over there, I could use them. Oh my god, guys, mermaid markers are addictive. Can't stop using them. That's what I did my carnivorous plant in was mermaid markers. green somewhere. That's what I want next. And again I'm going to water this one down. I don't want it to be too in your face. Uh, well, yeah, maybe. I'm not going to use a baby wipe for that though. I don't really care. I'm quite happy to leave it like that. If I really wanted soft, gradiated, graded, graduated, graduated, soft blending, uh, I would have gessoed my page in the first place, but I don't care. Bonus of being a book artist, you don't have to do stuff that everybody else says you're supposed to. Sorry, I keep going off camera, don't I? That's because I'm leaning over to one side. I don't know why YouTube shows you a different picture to the other one, uh, Twitch. I'm just softening this up a little bit. Yep, watercolours would work. Anything works to blend if you blend it properly. I didn't blend it properly, I just threw it on. <laughs> I don't I don't use professional painting techniques unless I'm doing a professional painting for sale. If I'm just working in my books, it's only for me, nobody else is gonna get it, are they? So I don't worry, I just throw it on and do what I want. I'm more, it's more about having fun and enjoying the process. It's not about. Making archival art or art that is beautifully blended or whatever. I just, you know, I'm just doing what I want to do. I may use my mermaid markers over the top of that to do some bits. I need to leave that to dry. I think I'm going to cut my bunny out. I don't know what I'm going to do with this or if I'm going to use it yet. So I'm going to cut that off. Cut my bunny. I'm very into the paper doll look at the moment. So I think I'm going to cut him out like a paper doll. This is a little thing that I did on my iPad and I loved the sketch so much that I just threw some, I don't know what it's called, I think it's a crosshair, you can see the, the really nice pattern on it, it's, a it's just a brush and I just threw some of that on and it looked really cool and I like him, he's lovely.
but the air staring the hair air the air, hair staring at the moon is a very traditional spring image in a lot of cultures um, the Japanese story of the hare and the moon or the rabbit and the moon is very well known Yeah, little bunny. about there. Now he's printed on inkjet paper so I'm going to spray him with a bit of workable fixative. Artists workable fixative for pastel chalk and graphite. You don't need a lot just a very quick like that. My window's open which is why I'm doing that indoors today otherwise I would have taken it outside and then you just leave it to dry. It won't make your non-waterproof inks waterproof. However, it will make them water resistant enough that you can use a liquid over the top. Now you could still move the colors with water. Don't get crazy with it. But I'm gonna paste him down with matte medium and normally water-based colors would move with matte medium. Um, but with the fixative, it just gives you enough time to put the matte medium over and it will stop the, the colours leaching up into the matte medium. Sorry, I look like I'm looking off camera now because I'm looking at the, the chat over there. My camera's over here. I can't do both. But this is this bit is not supposed to be so that I can... so that I'm on screen looking at the camera it's supposed to be so you can see my face so that those who need to lip read can I'm just wondering if I should do a little bit more to this before I put him on there I think maybe I should let's get the let's get the mermaid markers because you know I want to use them you just know They are just so darn cool. So let's use this nice spring green and add a little bit with the dark green afterwards, I think. I have some trouble getting this one to work properly. It's not as juicy as the others. I think this is one of the ones that didn't click properly and I don't know how to I don't know how to get that bit out in order to push it back in again or clean the nozzle or whatever it is I need to do to get the flow working properly I might email Jane and see what if she what she says maybe I can maybe you can take that out and twist it out with a tissue but That said, it seems to be working today, so. But it's still not as juicy as some of the others. Like the red one really comes out strong.
the brushes on these I think is what well the I mean the I love the colours because they're very muted I didn't expect them to be I expected them to be really in your face and they're not they're, they're lovely and of course the whatever the watercolour stuff is in it is really nice and easy to work with but I think the best thing about these things is the brush to be honest this brush is just so flexible I don't mean like flexible as in bendy I mean flexible as in you can do a lot with it you can get a really fine tip you can do dry brushing you can do colours you can do all sorts of things see your brush has gone dry again I want, I want that to look like that, see? They do work over acrylics though. This one just doesn't flow very well. For an unknown reason, I don't know why. Amber? Oh, Ashley's going to the museum. I thought Amber was going to the museum. No, see, I get you two confused. Can't one of you change your name to like Bob or something? That needs to dry now because it's a bit saturated. So I'm going to pull out this while I'm at it. I've got this page. kind of wanted to do something with it. No, not that one, this one. I never got around to doing anything with this one. And I kind of want to, but I don't know what I want to do. But what I do know I want to do is to... file the page down a bit, because it's really rough. the art alternatives book that I was talking about the sketchbook it is oh actually I did know it was in class I think um, you can get an eight and a half by eleven and an eight and a half by five and a half on Amazon you Amazon America Amazon US you can't get it in the UK you can get the spiral bound one but not the big thick chunky one the spiral bound one only has 80 pages. The chunky one has like 190 or 210 or something. It's a really big and chunky book. Um, but it's only a fiver. <laughs> or it was the other day when I ordered it. It was £5.87. $5 which worked out to about seven quid. So that'll be here next week. Um, I treated myself to a new sketchbook because this one... Although I'm like, I've got that much left of it, 
by the time I finish the April art challenge, I'm only going to have a few pages left. So, I also treated myself to some detail brushes and some black Liquitex acrylic because my other acrylic ran out and all my detail brushes are completely screwed. What do I want to do with this? I don't know what I want to do with it. It's Something's missing and I don't know what it is. What's missing? I feel like it needs some more colour but I don't know what colour to put with it. Where's my phone? I'm really into that paper doll cut out book look right now. I blame Bun for that. What goes with purple and orange? I think you need some green to be honest, but like a pale green, a soft green. What goes with orange and mauve? Here we go, colour wheel. Brown and gold, yeah, we got brown and gold, check. Greens, see? Teal, oh, blue green. Teal green, cobalt green, ooh. Bora Bora. All right then. Why not? Red, silver. Nah. I don't want to put silver in it because I've got gold. And I've already got purple and brown, so I don't really want to put red in there. Even though the, the purple is kind of a movie purple. I think it really needs a cool colour. Not much of a cool colour. It doesn't need a, a whopping great boom in your face cool colour. I think it just needs a couple of cool colours. I might do some leaves, some green leaves on it actually. There's another bit of that green in there.
go over it. You know, sometimes you just get those earworms in your head that won't go away. Oh, mushrooms. I could draw mushrooms there. That looks like those big flat mushroom things. You know how you get earworms and you just can't kind of... You can't get them out of your head so you end up with two songs merging together. I've kind of got that but it's not two songs. It's, it's Gwen Stefani and My Favourite Murder. So it's kind of going, woo-hoo, wee-woo, woo-hoo, wee-woo. And it's been happening all day. It's been having, you didn't switch. It switches to top chat all the time, Rach. You didn't do that. It always does that. It does that to me too. It's really annoying. There's no way to change it. Just tried to draw my bunny and according to his eyes he's on meth. <laughs> oh, well, you might need it. Are you anywhere near that storm that's coming in? Oh, Ashley. No, it, it's automatic because there's super chat. You People can pay to have their chat come up first in the comments. Except I don't have it enabled in my channel. Because I don't think the kind of people who have to pay or would want to pay to have their chat come up first in the comments are the kind of people who'd be hanging around in my channel. And if they are, then they're not paying extra to get their chat come up first. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> are these all acrylic paints? Well, some of it's acrylic, some of it isn't. That mermaid marker was water is watercolour dye or something. Watercolour dye based ink or pigment ink, I can't remember. Uh, this has got collage and ink. This is ink. There's acrylic paint. There's gesso. There's there's all sorts. It's mixed media. I do all sorts. But this is this is acrylic paint. Uh, and the colours I used in the on the bunny page, those are are acrylic paint so far, except for the mermaid markers. But, like I say, bear in mind, I use mixed media. I use a bit of everything. I like the throw it at the page and see what sticks technique. And if it doesn't stick, use stronger glue. I like that. I don't know if you can see that, but if you rub the paint off before it's completely dry, you get this kind of peeled paint grungy effect. You've put the mermaid markers on your wish list. You've never seen them before, Mandy. Really? They've been out for ages. They're Jane Davenport ones. In fact, she's got new ones out now. There's glittery ones, there's pastel ones, and there's dark ones. I may have allowed a set of dark ones to fall into my uh, Amazon basket the other day because there was a set in Canada, like here, 
to buy the six very dark colours, which are beautiful. They are so my colours. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the glitzy colours or the pastel colours or anything like that. Um, and I didn't, I didn't buy these. Nobody's owned up yet, but somebody sent me these from um, a some a shop on eBay, a UK shop on eBay. So I so I assume it's a UK subby, but nobody's owned up yet. Thank you again. I've said thank you several times, but thank you again. If it was you, own up. Who sent me these? Because they're gorgeous. I love them. Um, but I wouldn't have bought these myself. These are 35 quid to buy here, which is 50 bucks. Eww. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't pay that for a set of watercolour markers, especially when, as according to the packaging, they look like they're really bright in your face colours. And when you look at Jane's stuff, everything is very bright and in your face. And the only other person I knew who had them was Courtney and all her stuff is very bright and in your face. Well, that's not true. Bun's got some, but she, you can never really tell what's mermaid markers and what's something else with her. So I'm never sure if she's actually used them or not. Um, but yeah, everything seemed, seemed to be very bright, but actually they're very muted colours. I really like them. I was pleasantly surprised. But the dark set, there's only six. And here, they're £17. And I, I'm not paying £17 pounds for six markers. Not going to happen. I love you, Jane, but no. And then I just, I thought, well, I'll look on eBay. Because sometimes you get lucky. That's where I get a lot of my stuff. You get lucky and you find something that's like second hand. And somebody will say, oh, unwanted Christmas present. Unwanted Christmas present is the best best two words on ebay i get a lot of stuff that was unwanted christmas presents brand new brand new but it's got damaged packaging and they go well i used it once i got my apple pencil as an unwanted christmas present got it for 50 quid instead of 90 um anyway yeah i found these on in canada four canadian dollars plus two dollars postage it actually worked out for me about seven pounds for the six markers which is a pound each and because it's coming from canada and it's under 15 bucks it's not going to cost me import duties so if i'd bought them the only up until recently the only place you could get those those dark ones was from jane or from the states they've only recently come out here so you pay 40 odd quid for a set of markers and then you have to import them as well. But I was lucky and I found a set of the dark ones and I'm completely in love with them. They haven't even arrived yet. <laughs> it's going to take 10 to two, 10 days to two weeks. So I've got probably next week sometime. But that's okay. I'm still playing with the lighter colours. But... Um, yeah can't wait to get those dark colors especially that dark red and the dark blue i think there's a dark red a dark blue a green and a black <sighs> there's a black i mean i quite like the dark brown i'm not gonna lie i actually do quite like the dark brown but that black i want a black i need a black <laughs> So yeah, I got a bargain there. But again, I wouldn't even have looked for those if somebody hadn't bought me this set. I wouldn't have even looked to them because I didn't know there was a dark set out. It was only that I was looking for mermaid marker techniques on Jane's channel to see what she was doing with them. And uh, which is not a lot. She basically colours with them and adds water. She really isn't. She's not very adventurous with them at all, given what they can do. But, um, yeah, then I found, you know what it's like, you go looking for one video and then you start playing with something that you've seen in one video and then suddenly somebody, another video comes on and four hours later 
you're learning how to speak giraffe. And I didn't quite get to the point where I was learning how to speak giraffe, but I did find somebody who did a haul of the dark markers. Ah, I didn't know you had dark ones. So I, I treated myself to those. I got a commission this month, so. And I did manage to pay the bills. I like that effect. It's not often I do vertical stuff. better. Now I think it needs some orange. Let me use that translucent orange that I used just now. You're new to the Jane Davenport stuff. Oh wow. It's been out for a while. Do you not live near a Michaels or anything that would Oh, wait, are you Australian? No, if you were Australian, you'd definitely have heard of Jane, because she's Australian. Do you not live near a Michaels or something where they regularly have it? Oh, you're in the UK. Oh, right. OK, yeah, that kind of explains it. It's very hard to get the Jane Davenport stuff here and it costs a blooming fortune. I mean, like, like I said, I, I put off buying those mermaid markers because they were 30, 30, sometimes 35 quid plus postage. And I refuse to pay that kind of money for a set of watercolour markers. I mean, come on, because that's basically all they are. But they are really nice watercolour markers. If I didn't have any watercolour markers, they would be fine. I would have I would have bought them, but I have several sets of watercolour markers. I didn't really need another set. I am very glad I've got them though, because they are very, very nice to use. But having seen how nice they were to use and having found a cheap set of the dark ones. Yeah, the dark ones were coming home with me. That was happening. Mostly because I need a black, basically.
just to clarify, I don't use this kind of technique very often in my uh, Book of Shadows, which is what I started working on for anybody who joined late. That's what I'm actually working on. It's just that while I was waiting for that to dry, I've been staring at this page while I've been using my sketchbook this month and I really wanted to do something with it. It really needed a bit more something something. Now it's got some something something going on and I feel like I can take it a bit further. I'm not a huge fan of orange and I'm not a big fan of teal either, but I'm liking these two colours together. How weird. And these bits here look like those big kind of, you know, those big flat mushrooms that grow on the side of, of trees. They kind of look like that. I'm going to paint those in orange and then I'm going to go over them in pencil, I think, later on. Better, much better. <sighs> they're not refillable, no. Um, I asked Courtney about that and she said, currently they're not refillable, but it is something that Jane's looking into. But you can reuse them as like watercolour pens and or water brush pens. So anything you've got that is liquid, you could refill them with. So if you've got things like the Distress Paints, not the Distress Paints, the Distress Stains, you could refill them with those. I'm actually thinking, you know, when you get down to about, once you get down to about halfway, I reckon you could fill them with distilled water and they'd still be just as vibrant. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to water them down and re-wet them as much, but if you're just using them as colouring, which I think most people do. I mean, I tend to colour with them and then blend them out at the edges, which is what I like to do, and then blend them into each other. But I reckon if you don't use them with water after the fact, you could probably get down to halfway, refill it with distilled water and lengthen the time you've got the markers for. I might try that with a colour that I'm not going to use very much, to be honest. Decant out the liquid and see if I can split it in half and put the half of the liquid. Because I'm not, I'm never going to use this bright pink. Never in a month of Sundays am I going to use all this bright pink. So I might decant out into a one of those little shippable ink bottles some of the liquid and send it to Courtney because she goes through this really quickly. Um, and then refill this with distilled water and see how long it lasts for. Because you only need to fill it to there. It only needs to come up just above the P line for it to be full, because you've got to have enough air for the filter. But they're super, super pigmented. So, But if, you, if you're using them with water, as you should be, or as you're supposed to, as they're designed, they'd last for freaking ages. I suspect I've got a few colours that will disappear quite quickly because I'm I'm very much into doing like this kind of stuff. This was quite saturated, but even it didn't bleed through or anything. They were really nice to use. And that red was super saturated. It came out really, really wet and juicy. 
and then I blended it down into the green and then I blended it back up with a darker green. Um, but I could quite easily have just done the bulbs in the red and brought the colour down and water, watered it down. Watercolour doesn't work too well in the moleskins though so I'm going to wait on that technique. That's one of the reasons I've bought the Art Alternatives books next. No, they're not they're not stiff at all. They're they're very flexible. Uh, the brushes are part of the best thing about them actually. I actually can't wait for one of them to run out so that I can turn it into a water brush because it is way better than any of the water brushes I've got. And I've got the I've got the Pentel ones. I've got the Kuritaki ones which are the blue, green and red, yellow set. And I've got the Koi marker. The, sorry, the Koi one that comes in the Koi uh, paint set and the brushes on these are way better way better than anything I've used and I love that they're so big I mean there's there's a heck of a lot more in this than there is in I mean look at the difference in size you can fit a lot more in the body of this than you can in this and it's it's bigger and rounder whereas this is flat The brushes are lovely. And you know me, I've always got something to complain about. Well, you know, they're this and they're that and they do, and they do the but, you know, the only thing I can complain about is I don't like the bright pink because it's too bright and there wasn't a black in the set. And Jane's fixed that by bringing out a dark set. So, and not, of course, no, but not everybody's going to like every colour that's in there, but the pink, ugh. Oh yeah, you can refill them. In fact, I've got Brusho. And I'm pretty sure you could refill this with a little bit of Brusho and some water and use that. But I equally, I think you could fill it with distress stains. Anything that's not going to clog up your brush. Anything that's water-based, you could definitely refill them with. But from what Courtney said, she implied that it's been something that's been mentioned to Jane before and it's something she's looking into. I hope she is because there's a lot of plastic involved in these and it, yes you can refill them and use them as water brushes I love that idea that's great how many flipping water brushes are you going to need <laughs> you know I'd rather be able to refill this you like the bright pink and the black I like the blue obviously I actually like all the colours. Um, I did my colour swatches on them the other week. Where are my colour swatches that I did? There they are. They're all very, very muted colours. This one is inaccurate. It's a lot darker than that um, because this one is the one that I couldn't get to flow properly. You can see these have all got really good flow, but that one, I just cannot get it to flow properly. Funnily enough, it's this one everybody else has trouble with, but when it didn't initially go, I just shook it and then it worked. But this one I've had a lot of problems with. I think I need to take the inside out and clear the hole. I think the hole hasn't pierced properly. But if you take that colour out, and I'm not entirely sure about that colour either, I probably would only use that for blending. But if you took those two colours out, this side is entirely my colour palette. And I would certainly use these because these are face colours. Dilution zinc would you, would work, yeah. The spray inks. As long as they haven't got mica in them, the mica would bung up your brushes probably. I mean, you could try it, but my I, my suspicion is that the, the mica would dry in the filter and clog up the filter. But anything that's not got any glitter or anything in, although, you know, Jane actually does ones that have glitter in. So perhaps if you had the glitter versions, you could use those when they're empty with some something that's got mica in but you could certainly put distress stains or dilution spray inks or you know if it works in a spray and it doesn't clog up your spray it would work in one of these you can also use um, like ordinary ink if you water it down not acrylic ink but ordinary watercolour ink so like if you've got for those of us in the UK Mandy Neal 
Windsor, Windsor and Newton water-based inks. I mean, you couldn't use this because it's metallic, it's got mica in it. But the regular ones of these don't have anything in that you can even use them in fountain pens. So if you can use them in fountain pens, you can use them in a brush pen. Yeah, they're a lot more muted. I expected them to be full on in your face. But of course, I'd only ever seen it used by Jane. And Jane tends to use these three colours. And Courtney had used them and she always uses the bright pink and the bright yellow. So I expected them to be like, woof, in your face. It was only when by Bun started using them and she was using this dark brown and the jellyfish colour. And I was like, ooh, that purple's nice. <laughs> I like that. Because this, this is my grey lavender that I like so much. That's what this colour is. The um, This, this is the muted grey ink. The Liquitex muted grey ink. But a lot of these colours, I was going to try and swatch it actually and see if I could match them up. But a lot of these colours would match the Liquitex muted colours. That's the colours. That blue is almost identical to Blue Bottle. If you mixed Blue Bottle and Byron Bay, you'd get that blue. That green is almost identical to Siren, it's just a bit darker. That is very close to Jellyfish, maybe a little bit pinker. That is almost identical to that coral colour. You know, and these, I love these paints, these muted paints, I have them in all the colours. I have the muted grey in all the, all the things. <laughs> I just need the heavy body and I'm good. Right, so that's that's that. That's a class page, by the way, for anybody asking. If you want to do, want to buy Bun's classes, this is one of her class pages part way through. I'm not even, I mean, I think I'm only on like the second video and there's 15 videos or something ridiculous. So, but it's it's similar to my technique up to a point and then we go, th go off on different directions. So I've been playing around with that. What were the brands of paints I just showed? The Liquitex Muted. They do heavy body, ink and soft body. It's a limited edition set. Well, it says it's limited edition, but they've been available for like three years. So they can't be that limited. But yeah, that purple grey, that lavender grey, that's my colour. I love that. I've got that colour on my nails at the moment, although I messed up my nails this morning when I was painting. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Liquitex Muted. But that's the, the same lavender grey I've got on my nails. In some lights it looks purpley. I, I love that colour. Excuse my nasty nails, I didn't see the point in redoing them in order to come and paint again and completely wreck them again. So I'm just going to wait until later and then I'll repaint them tonight ready for class tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put my little bunny on. I think his, his um, fixative will be dry now. So he was printed on not photo paper but high quality document paper. I've got two types of paper. This is 120... This is this one is OPI. It's one of the Susie ones. It's not Susie Loves Dallas because that's the brown. Susie and the Arctic Fox, I think it's called. It's from the Reykjavik collection. Susie and the Arctic Fox, I think it is. OPI. Gorgeous colour. Love it. It's black and it's purple, but it's neither. It looks better in daylight. Uh, anyway, if you didn't see it earlier, this was printed on £120 regular document paper. Uh, I don't use photo paper for collage. It's on an inkjet printer, so this is water-based ink, which means if you get it wet, it's going to go all over the place. But I sprayed it with some workative, workable fixative. That does not make it waterproof, but it does allow you time... To put it down with a bit of matte medium and as long as you don't overwork the top of it 
uh, you should be able to get it down and onto the page and dry before this colour starts leaching. So I'm going to put him about there, I think. I wish that was moved over that way a little bit. Yeah, let's put him about there. So in order to minimise the time, rub him down with my finger first. Now this is water-based colour, so I need to put this colour from the middle out. Otherwise, if I just go like that, I'll be painting him green. And I can't go too far outwards. I'll let the colour come up over his feet, because he's standing in grass anyway. I can't go too far outwards because I'll start, can you see here it started, the colours started leaching away from the matte medium. It's easily fixed, just go in with a bit of paint, uh, a bit of crayon afterwards. Make sure he's got in stock and then if there's any green on him you should be able to wipe it off. See the colour is leached away. Well the same thing would happen to your ink if you didn't spray it. Really to paste him down over the water base colour I should have put fixative on that too but first time for that eh? I can just as easily go back in with this and add a bit more to the background. Oh, it's coming out a bit juicier now. Not a lot juicier, but a bit. He's standing in the grass, so let's have a few bits of grass coming up around his feet. Like that. And I really like that beachy colour. I'm going to put some of that in his ears, give him a little bit of shading. This one you really do have to shake. There we go. This is a bit too dark. But I think I want to use it just... Give him a little bit of shading. I don't want to go crazy. I just want to put a little bit here and there. Blend that out with a little bit of water. Again, I don't want to use too much water because that'll lift the ink. A little bit of colour. I 
I'm liking this second layer of green. I'm going to go back in and do the rest of that. Because where this was over acrylic, because it's chalk acrylic, it's gone a bit chalky. But the second layer looks a bit juicier. Do you know what? It's always really bugged me when beauty gurus are all like, oh, it's so juicy. Oh, juicy colour. Oh, juicy, juicy. It just really annoys me, that word. Some people don't like the word moist. I don't like the word juicy. But since I got these damn things, I keep saying it. Because <laughs> there's no other way to describe them. If I start calling myself an entrepreneur, just shoot me, OK? Just put me out to pasture. That's the end. <laughs> dog hairs okay I want to give him a little bit of yellow in his eyes so I am actually going to use this yellow but I'm, I'm doing like one circle so don't get excited I just want his eyes to stand out the yellow didn't print very well that's why okay so I'm liking it. I think he needs some little flowers. Let's get him some nice pale little flowers. What nice pale colour should we use for his flowers? Um, I don't want to use the pink because that's in the background. I've got a nice pale mauve somewhere. Where's my mauve? Okay, it's a bit brighter than I want, but... This will do. Uh, round brush. Nope. That one. Butterfly, hey. Okay. And then I'll just put some, actually spring tends to be ground flowers, doesn't it? So let's just put some ground flowers in. Cute, cute. You missed a chunk. Oh yeah, it is where you water it down, yeah. Fiver. Uh, where's that nice Calypso blue I was using earlier? I used this colour earlier and it was really nice. So let's put some of that in there. In the flowers. I'll mix it with this purple so it's not the same colour a bit more sort of forget-me-not blue because that's that's kind of what we get this time of year isn't it forget-me-not colours not doing too precise with this because I can always go in with pencil afterwards and just pick up some more of the colour if I want to or add some more shading or whatever. I always, nearly always go back in over either watercolour or acrylic with pencil or oil pastel. Usually in a mixed media piece like that one I'll go in with oil pastel and in something like this I go in with pencil. Sometimes I use both, which is what I've been doing with my Kurt Cobain piece, but it was only because I needed to scribble. <laughs> I was getting angry and angsty and I needed to scribble, so I did.
I'm liking it. Okay, so now what do I want to do? Do I want to use this as a cutout piece? Or do I want to just draw it? I'm kind of liking the cutout idea, actually. Maybe if I cut it out a little bit bigger than it actually is. Yeah, let's cut it out a little bit bigger and repaint it. No, don't like that. Let's just cut it out around the white bits like I did with that, the rabbit. Woo-hoo. Wee-woo. Woo-hoo. Wee-woo. Can't get that out of my head now. Also gives a little bit more stability to that piece, you see, because it's a thicker, a thicker section. If you go round it like that, I like that. That's cute. Where's my rubbish bin? Oh, it's in my drawer. I keep forgetting I've put my rubbish bin in my drawer. I put it down there so it will be easy because I kept I kept throwing stuff in rubbish in my drawer I kept throwing stuff in my drawer here so I put my rubbish bin in my drawer and since I put my rubbish bin in my drawer I don't open my drawer so I don't throw rubbish in there my brain I tell you it's, an, it's a constant battle yeah he's cute I like that uh, I can't remember if I can't remember if I've already um put thingy on it, you know. I don't remember if I sprayed it, but it's only yellow, so it's not it's only lemon, it's not gonna do the it's not gonna be the end of the world if it Yeah, it's running a little bit. It's not the end of the world. It's easier to stick down than the bunny was, so. See, all the colours are running. As soon as you rub it, all the colours start to run. Didn't ha help that I had some reddish colours on there either. But it doesn't matter because Corners come up. Hang on. I can't show you what I've finished with my previous page yet, by the way, because I haven't done anything with it. Remember, I made the wand page. I haven't finished going through my notes to decide what I want to write on there. But as soon as I do, I will I will show it to you. Same as this. Once I've written on it, uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. There's no point in me doing writing on camera because it'll distract me. I won't know what I'm writing. And when you're writing on camera, people tend to want to know what you've written as well. <laughs> and that's not the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise is to show you how you can do something simple and arty and then write on top of it. 
what you want rather than just having a, a plain page in your book. So I think the only sensible thing to do with this now is to add silver ink, right? I mean, come on. I bought some detail brushes. I've got this beautiful Winsor & Newton metallic ink. This is the silver version. You know the copper and gold that all the uh, bullet journalers went nuts over for doing their brush lettering in their bullet journals? Yeah, this is the silver one. <laughs> Look, I'm covered in... Those mermaid markers are not permanent, but damn, they stain. So, detail brush. I'm going to need a teeny brush. I'm going to use one of my new detail brushes. I got these... Look at the tininess of that. I got a set of 12 on Amazon for a couple of pounds. Because all mine are destroyed. Mine no longer make straight lines because they all look fuzzy. They make pretty patterns, but they don't make straight lines. I mean, look at this. How do you how do you do anything with that? Look at the difference. I think they're the same size. Two over zero, yeah. Those are the same size. Look at the difference. Can't even get this one to go back into shape anymore. <laughs> This is why I don't spend a lot of money on brushes. Yes, I could buy br good brushes that will last longer, but they won't last longer because I'm horrible to my brushes. Oh. There we go. Super tip, by the way. I see a lot of people struggling with stuff on camera. If something like your ink bottle gets stuck, just turn it out upside down, tap it. I did the same with my gel medium and my glue, my paints. My paints are always getting gunged up because I use my paint lids. Because I do that. <laughs> oh, dropped a bit of, a bit of crunchy off the lid. There we go. Of course, if you don't use your paint lids, then your paint lids don't get stuck either. But let's not go there, okay? Love the sink. That's so pretty. It doesn't go on streaky. It's beautifully shiny. It's a shame it's water-based because otherwise I'd use it as a nail polish. If it was acrylic, I'd definitely use it as a nail polish. I have to go back around the outline with a dark pen, but that's okay. baby girl. Miss Maddie coming for the belly rubs. Hi baby. Look how shiny. Look how shiny. And it'll stay like that when it's dry too. It'll be that shiny when it's dry. So pretty. And then I think we'll do Push my tool tray back in before it comes flying out. I've got a gold acrylic, so I think I'll use that because the only other one I've got, the only other acrylic I've got is copper, which is not quite what I want. But this is gold, it's iridescent. So it will have. Pretty much the same effect. Da 
okay. Oh, super fine detail brushes that make drawing pointy things so happy. Yay. Good set of brushes, actually, for, I think it was like three quid, two quid, something like that. Set of 12. I mean, there are some no-name brand, you know, but... rather buy a two quid set of paintbrushes and replace them every six months. See that metallic shiny is even shinier than the acrylic. The acrylic is nice, the acrylic is shiny, but the silver shiny is even shinier. Okay. Oh my god, I've had the case to that in my hand. Where's it gone? There it is. The minute I needed to put it back on the brush, I managed to put it down and lose it. Not that it matters, it won't hang around for long. Okay, I think since it's spring, not summer, I want to give him little bit of cloud so I'm going to use my white but I'm going to use my translucent white so it doesn't go completely crazy I don't want it to go super thick I just want it to look cute let's clean my white off there we go If I use the translucent white, you can kind of see the colours through it. So it looks like spring clouds rather than those big, heavy summer clouds you get. I don't want it to look... over the top. I just want it to look... Well, you know, it might rain sometime today. Or as our... British weather forecast likes to tell us there's a 50% chance of rain which basically means it might rain it might not <laughs> if that's the best they can do as a weather forecast I think maybe we can save some money there we go nice pale clouds I'll do a little one around here somewhere, a little fluffy one. Little cotton candy, wispy things. When the when the heavy clouds disappear, the lower clouds disappear. This is what's left underneath with the the blue sky. Especially in the evening, it's like that at the moment. Like all the lower cloud has disappeared and there's just this cotton candy fluff in the sky. A little bit more. Kind of trying to make it denser in the middle and then just fade out around the edges. Happy little clouds. We don't have any happy little trees, but we have happy little clouds. Little wispy bits. That'll do. There we go. 
My cousin lives, they get told 3% chance of snow and it'll be snowing so hard you can't see out our windows. Yeah, but it'll only snow like that for 3% of the time <laughs> that it's snowing. I think that's how they justify it. I just don't, it just has never made sense to me, the whole, well, there's a 50% chance of rain. There's always a 50% chance of rain. That's our weather in the UK. It's either raining or it's not. There's no... There's no difference, you know? It's either raining or it's not raining. Sometimes it's windy as well. Sometimes it's cold. Sometimes it's warm. But, you know, nine times out of ten, the only time we mention the, the weather is to say, is it raining? Is it going to rain later? Or to complain about how hot it is or how cold it is. We're never happy with the temperature because we like the temperate climate. We don't like when it drops below zero or goes above 25. Okay, I think I'm going to just do a little bit of brown on my burnie. Give him a nice coffee colour. dappling. You can still see the dark brown over him um, but if I'm I'm just doing this as just kind of bump his colour up a little bit give him this soft brown all over. You'll still see the dark brown texture over the top but this will just give him a little bit more definition. Leave his face white. just needs a little bit of dark brown around his eyes. I that lovely soft brown. There it is. Mm. It's going to need sharpening. Oh, I'm nearly finished now, Jen. You haven't missed much. I'm nearly done. I just want to add a little bit of darkness around his eyes because at the moment his eyes are blue because I drew him in blue pen and I scanned him and then I coloured him on my iPad so his outlines are blue which is fine but on his eye I think I just want to give him a little bit more of that kind of Egyptian eye that they have and then I've got a number two pen. And I'm going to go in. Actually, no, the black pen will be too harsh. I'm going to use a graphite pencil. To do his eye, that's better. And I'll use the same pencil to go back around the moon. Black would be too harsh against all this pastel colour, but the graphite pencil should work fine. Although, especially over the ink. Maddie! Neighbours home. Maddie, Scooby, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Good. There we go. I know, goddamn people walking down your goddamn street. It's a scandal. As I was saying, over this ink, the pencil will not stay put. It will shift about. So before I close the page, I'll just throw a little bit of fixative on this as well. And it will also help fix that ink in place because that ink is water based and it does rub off and I might just do the same with the mermaid markers just so that if it does run 
because obviously if you go in here with a wet ink like a fountain pen afterwards the fountain pen especially if you use a color fountain pen the water-based paints here are going to pick up with the fountain pen and start to bleed all over the place so just by putting a a bit of a thing on he's got a friend he's got a little friend he's got the moon the moon is his friend the rabbit in the moon do you not know the rabbit in the moon Look up the Japanese story of the rabbit in the moon. The moon is his friend. The rabbit, the rabbit in the moon stirring the cauldron is his friend and he makes a wish. I'm just going to put a little bit of dark in there because that graphite is just a tiny bit shiny. There we go, that's good. So I thought for this page I might do, obviously I've got two pages for Ostara because I've got two pages for each one so I could do an art page and then a, a written page but I think for this guy I might do the symbolism of the hair and why he is, what he stands for and why he's often used around Easter, Ostara, kind of folk tales and why he's prevalent this time of year. And then I want my tiny brush again. My, which tiny brush did I use? This one. Tiny bit of heavy body white. See you, Ina. I'm nearly finished. I'm just literally just going to put his eye thing in and I'm done. So let me move you down here for a second while I show you his eye. Probably should have zoomed you in earlier, but yeah. where would have been a fun in that? Okay, so there he is. I'm using the heavy body white acrylic because I can put a blob of it, of it on and it won't run everywhere. So let's put a little bit here. And a little bit here. Don't touch the mermaid marker because the mermaid marker will run. And a little blob in his eye about there and there we go there he is a look up list and whether you're really oh cool are you in class Mandy I can't remember come and join the website there's always plenty to look up <laughs> And there's a forum so you can ask questions and stuff if you've lost things or you're not sure about something. Okay, where's... Oh, there it is. I'm going to have to put... I'm going to have to soak these in colour again. What I do with these plastic things that come on my brushes, these things, uh, because I'm constantly losing them and I can never see them, is I will take them all off my brushes and soak them in ink overnight. And then wash them off and they're all they're all of because they're plastic they won't go like dark dark water-based ink not like acrylic ink just a dark ink like a pen ink that will stain it and then it'll stain and then you can see where the damn things are but you can still see through to see what your thing is 
what colour your what your brush is. So there we go, there's our bunny. Use shiny moon and shiny star. Make a wish on for our starer. These little bunny eyes. Am I going to be able to get that to go back to where it was now? Oh, I did. It's fairly unusual, that doesn't normally happen. There you go. Now, because this is acrylic, writing over it with a good fountain pen, not a good idea. Uh, also, you'll find some felt tip pens will struggle. Um, I use a big, thick, um, uh, not thick, runny, wet, a wet fountain pen. So I don't have a lot of problem. Uh, but I also like ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen, ballpoint pen will write over anything. Regular old Bic ballpoint. Uh, no, he's in my pencil case now. One of these. If you ever have trouble writing over stuff, just grab one of these. These will write over anything. They won't always write on shiny surfaces, like if it's glossy or vinyl or anything like that. But because they're oil based, they will go over just about anything else, including wax. You can even write with these over Prismacolor, but you have to keep cleaning your nib because the wax will gunk up your nib. But you can write over it. So there's our bunny. I've been dying to do that bunny for weeks. I was going to do it last, like two weeks, three weeks ago. So there's my, I've got a lot of bits to add to these, but. So I've got Samane. That's my over page. This was a, I think this was a Witchy Wednesday one as well. I did this over like two or three weeks. It's got sparkles and glitter, sparkly geodes and glittery candles and all sorts. Um, it's got glazing on the top. Uh, and then I've got my, guess which is my favourite holiday. And I haven't done, I ha I've got done my crow, I haven't written in. I've got my Yule one but I haven't coloured it, I just drew this one because this is clear so I, I didn't really want to go overboard with it there would don't really only be the holly that would be coloured so I thought, you know, I'll just leave it I'll just leave it black and white, it looks better and then I've got my Ostara again, for me, I won't sit and write a list if you're a beginner, by all means sit and do, you know correspondence lists for what what you need, think you need. I don't need the correspondence lists. So I will write other stuff like why hairs are so prevalent around Ostara, why they come into so much imagery, you know, things like that. I don't need the rest of it. But there's an idea for what you can do with the oldie book of shadows. I'll put that in there until I actually know. I'll forget otherwise, won't I? So I might as well spray it now while I've got the window open. Just enough to set that watercolour. You can do hairspray as well. <laughs> hairspray will work just as well. I just happen to have workable fixative. I'm just spreading the fumes about. So I'll leave that to dry now and then this one I'll carry on with later. I like this one a lot more now. I feel like I can do something else with it now as opposed to what I had before which was just oh my god look at all that orange. I feel like it needs vines. It needs vines coming down the page like green vines coming down the page. Mm. So I'll play with that as well. But first, I've got to go and edit the vlog for tomorrow. Oh, vlog editing.
I don't know how long the vlogging vibe will last for, but you know, it doesn't always last for very long. But I'm okay with it at the moment. It'll only take me having a busy week and I'll suddenly go, oh, vlogging's too much effort. I'm not doing it anymore. But I've noticed a lot of people doing one once a week type vlogs these days. So maybe that's a way to go. Do a little bit of editing every day and then put a vlog up properly once a week. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you all again on Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye.